In the ancient city of Babylon, the night sky was more than just a canvas of stars, it was a map, a living chronicle that guided the destinies of gods and men alike. The heavens, ever-changing, whispered secrets to those who could decipher their language, and among these secrets was the tale of Marduk's ascension, a tale written not only in the hearts of the faithful but also in the stars above. In the early days, Ye, the god of wisdom, held dominion over the incantations that bound demons and protected mortals from the malevolent forces of the unseen world. These spells, once powerful, began to shift as the city of Babylon rose to prominence. The priests, recognizing the need for a central figure of power, began to re-edit these ancient incantations, replacing the name of Ye with that of Marduk, the patron deity of Babylon. Marduk was now heralded as the supreme protector, the one who held sway over all demons, witches, and sorcerers. As Marduk's power grew, the hymns once dedicated to other gods, such as Bel, Shamash, and Adad, were transformed. What were once songs of praise for these deities became paeans to Marduk, the new head of the pantheon. Ancient myths, stories of the seasons, and natural occurrences were rewritten, their original meanings obscured. These tales were now retold to glorify Marduk, attributing to him the mighty deeds and symbolic acts once associated with the natural world. But Marduk's supremacy did not go unchallenged. Shamash, the sun god, and Sin, the moon god, sought to retain their influence over their celestial domains. However, even these mighty deities could not escape the transformation sweeping through the heavens. Minor solar gods, once worshipped in lesser-known cities, were absorbed into the cult of Marduk. Ninib, the sun god of the springtime and morning, became just one aspect of the solar cycle under Marduk's rule, while Nurgle, the god of summer's scorching heat, was relegated to the role of a harbinger of death. The priests, ever attuned to the heavens, began to weave the movements of the stars and planets into their theology. The heavens were in constant flux, and so too was the fate of the gods. Anu, the god of the highest heavens, was assigned a position as the first in a triad with Bel and Ea. These three gods were given dominion over the three divisions of the universe, the heavens, the earth, and the deep waters. Yet, even these powerful gods were not immune to the pull of the stars. As the astral theology took hold, the gods were disassociated from their local cults and became celestial powers, ruling over the heavens themselves. In this celestial order, Marduk's star burned the brightest. The priests, now masters of the skies, identified Marduk with the planet Jupiter, solidifying his place as the supreme deity of the Babylonian pantheon. Venus became the domain of Ishtar, the great mother goddess, while Mars was associated with Nurgle, and Mercury with Nebo. Saturn was given to Ninib, completing the astral configuration that would define the heavens for centuries to come. Yet, despite Marduk's rise, two deities managed to retain a measure of independence, Anu, the god of heaven, and Ishtar, the goddess of fertility and life. Ishtar, in particular, remained a force to be reckoned with, her power undiminished even as she was often linked with Marduk or Assur, the chief god of Assyria. As the source of all life, Ishtar's influence was felt in every aspect of existence, from the cycles of the moon to the fertility of the earth. She stood apart, a symbol of vitality in a world increasingly dominated by Marduk's order. The priests, ever mindful of the balance between heaven and earth, crafted a second triad to complement the first. This triad, consisting of Shamash, Sin, and Ishtar, represented the three great forces of nature, the sun, the moon, and the life-giving power. As the stars moved across the sky, they told a story of divine power, of the interplay between these forces, and of the ever-present influence of Marduk, whose star shone brightest in the night. And so, as the heavens shifted and the stars danced their eternal dance, the story of Marduk's rise was written in the very fabric of the universe. The gods, once tied to the earth, were now celestial beings, their power reflected in the stars above. To read the signs of the heavens was to understand the will of the gods, to foresee the future, and to know that in the ever-changing tapestry of the cosmos, Marduk stood, at the center, a beacon of divine authority in a world governed by the movements of the stars.